Welcome to California Habit number two. Now, before I do any martial art video, I left off a very important figure. I probably should have saved him until Friday, but it's midnight. So this, this will be one of the last two videos I do for the night. So, first off, one of the greatest black martial artists who I do not know if he's still alive or if he's dead. But if I didn't do this video, then I probably would lose my entire black belt card, my martial art card, my superhero license, my black license. I probably would never, ever have a ghetto pass ever again if I didn't do this one martial artist. See, there was a black martial artist that started it all for black people. I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all don't know who he is, but he was the one the only, the freaking amazing, died and entered the dragon, known as Black Belt Jones. Played a mutant in the Western, but still got to do his martial art thing. His name is James Kelly, a.k.a. Jim Kelly. Now, Jim Kelly has made a few TV appearances, and he's done a whole lot of movies, I think, eight in all. I will not swear to it, because after Enter the Dragon, he got mediocre roles. They really didn't let him... Um, you know, glide, all right? Now, let me explain that. In the days of Jim Kelly, this was your primary martial art um, status. So, Chuck and Bruce were running on a tie, but for America, it was more about Chuck than Bruce. And for China, it was more about Bruce than Chuck, all right? Now, in the ethnic scale, generally the white man's going to be on top. So, it was all about Chuck. And Bruce was just on the coattails, even though Bruce was the man. However... The world was not really ready for an Asian superhero or an Asian hero in general, so we got Chuck Norris. And I'm not knocking Chuck Norris because Walker, Texas Ranger is a bad motherfucker. And the new Walker, Texas Ranger comes on tomorrow, so don't forget to watch that. But anyway, <laughs> Jim Kelly, one of the premier first black martial artists ever. All right? I understand how much this means to the black community. If you're black and you don't know who the hell Jim Kelly is, you may be losing your ghetto pass. Jim Kelly, we're only going to talk about Into the Dragon. But we are going to mention Black Belt Jones. And we are also going to mention the movie where he played a mute. Because in that he played with Jim Brown and a couple of other guys that he also would play in original Gangsters. But I believe Jim Kelly died in those films. And in fact, the only film I'm pretty sure he didn't die in was Black Belt Jones. It's been a while since I've seen it, so I could be wrong. But Jim Kelly has done some great things for the black community in the martial arts world. You know? And granted, back in the 70s and stuff like that, they were mostly exploitation films. But Jim Kelly was the best at what he did. All right? And no, that is not just a quote from Wolverine. Literally, Jim Kelly was far hands down the best black martial artist of his day. I understand that shit. Now, granted, the fancy shit didn't, didn't really break into martial arts until like the 80s and 90s with the surgeons of Taekwondo and some other shit. But Jim Kelly, for his style of martial arts, was the best at what he did at this time. I want you guys to go check out Black Belt Jones because I know he survives in that. I don't remember the name of the movie where it's a Western and he had not a speaking role, but he had a good lot of screen time and he was beating people ass. Now, that was a Western. I'm pretty sure he died in that. I'm not going to swear to it, but I know he survived in Black Belt Jones. Mm -hmm. Black Belt Jones is also kind of one of those movies that kind of spawned off things like Dolomite and other stuff like that. There were other exploitation films like Cleopatra Jones and some other stuff with Payne Greer. But this ain't about the ladies. This is about Jim Kelly. Jim Kelly played a man named Williams. He wore a yellow suit. He got killed by a Chinese dude on an island in the movie Enter the Dragon. John Saxon was also in there. John Saxon was a white man. He was not as popular as Chuck Norris, but John Saxon was a student of Bruce Lee and also a legit martial artist for those sleeping on Bruce thinking he's not fucking legit. It's funny how everybody puts down a dead man because the dead man is not alive here to defend himself. All right. Also, somebody remind me that next month in March is the death anniversary of Brandon Lee, and I want to do a video about it. So somebody make sure y'all remind me about that here on Instagram and on YouTube. Well, Jim Kelly played Williams. Williams was a street hustler who beat up some cops in a movie who found himself on an island with Bruce Lee and John Saxon. I will not give you any more about the movie 
because I want you guys to go see Enter the Dragon, Black Belt Jones. At least see Enter the Dragon. If you don't see Black Belt Jones or anything else, at least see Enter the Dragon. Please see Enter the Dragon. All right. Now, Jim Kelly. Badass motherfucker. Yeah, foom, foom. <laughs> yeah, it's Jim Kelly. Don't put nothing past Jim Kelly. Jim Kelly was a great martial artist. I will not swear to him being a black belt. All right? I will not swear to that because belts is something that came up in the 60s, 70s, and maybe the 40s or 50s when the indoctrination of Asians start coming into America and immigrating and stuff like that. But the belt system is bullshit to me, but it does exist. I will definitely make a video about that in the future about why I don't like the black belt system. And I did touch on this before about getting kicked out of dojos because I thought that you know if I go in and ask them if I can fight for my belt, etc., etc., it would be a lot easier for me to fight for my belt because that way I know the shit that I can do works versus... You get the gist. Those are blocks I don't even fucking use. Anyway, that being said, Jim Kelly, sadly, his character gets killed. I think they, they torture him, and then they drop him in a boiling water. You know, kind of fucked up shit. I just ruined it for you, but anyway, you should still go watch the movie. For me, it still holds up. I do not know if they're ever going to remake Enter the Dragon, but if they do, I will gladly play Jim Kelly's character unless I don't look black enough. I have been told I don't look black enough before. Yes, that's a funny story. I will definitely probably touch on that in the future, too. So anyway, that being said, Jim Kelly, one of the greatest martial arts, he was like, had an afro, you know, big tall guy, about 6'1". So this also, on my purposes of why, you know, you do karate, kung fu, due to your size, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll make a, a, a really good point about size. And then, if you don't believe me, you can go check this shit out. All right. So, we're going to get off of Jim Kelly. Thank you, Jim Kelly, wherever you are. And we're going to go to somebody who I know is still fucking alive, who's also a G-Kum Do practitioner, and he is famous, and he was in the movie The Game of Death. I love you, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You are not going to like what I have to say. Anybody who's a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar fan, understand I am a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar fan. As a martial artist, I am going to insult Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. It's nothing personal, Kareem. But Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is like, what, nine feet tall? Which is where it makes it a little bit more difficult for him to do certain moves that Bruce was doing with him in Enter the Dragon. Excuse me, wrong movie. Game of Death. In Game of Death, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar sat in a chair. sat in a chair, like this. He had sunshades on. Cooler than a motherfucker. With an afro. Bruce comes at him. Boom! He kicks him. Bruce comes at him again. Boom! He kicks him. Bruce comes at him again. He does something else and winds up having to get out of the fucking chair. This chair is Bruce Lee. I'm Kareem. Hold on. This chair is Bruce Lee. I'm Kareem. Now, here's where shit gets fucked up. This is the part that I piss off Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. No offense, Kareem, and I'm sorry. Alright, so everything that Bruce did, had, he had to bring Kareem down. Now, Kareem may have some spectacular moves off camera. But on camera, he was exceptionally stiff and exceptionally long and lanky. That's why I'm apologizing, Kareem. Because there are some martial arts styles that if you are too tall, you should not even consider performing. Alright? And I'm not trying to be a dick about that shit. I'm pretty sure that Kareem could put his foot right here on top of this damn ceiling. No problem. The problem is Kareem would have to duck to get in here. He'd also have to duck before he could put his foot on the ceiling because the ceiling is not tall enough for his ass to get in here. Same thing with Shaq. So if Kareem 
Well, Shaq decided that they wanted to do a low, high kick. They probably destroyed the fucking house. They're like, boom, boom. All right? Probably destroy the house. Where if I'm the target and I block and duck, I can sweep under. I can move in. Because he's doing this shit here. I'm doing this. Block. I duck the top one. Now I can go in. I can break the leg, slide up the freaking damn other leg and hit him in the crotch. Fight's mine. It's going to be a lot easier for me to get in and get under him because he's so damn tall. He's also not going to expect me to do something that shit because he's not going to think that I'm going to go in close. Well, here's the damn bad news about being 5'3". I don't have a fucking choice. At 5'3", the range of combat is not in my favor. Understand that. Even with Wen Chung, the range of combat is still not in my favor. So, if I combine Wen Chung with a Kempo strike, so if you're throwing a, a punch and I punch your knuckle, like right here on your metal carpet, boom, you know, so I, boom, you know, I'm hitting specific targets using Kempo, or I'm going to use Mantis, because the bigger you are, I have to adapt to fight you at your style. But I got to turn you into fighting me. I have to make you fight my fight. I have to bait your ass in. And if you're long and you have range, the range of combat is more dangerous for me because you have range. But you have to get in to hit me. I don't have to be there when you swing. You understand where I'm going with that shit? Yeah, I know. It seems like I'm all over the place, but I'm honestly not. Kareem is really, really fucking tall. Shaq is really, really fucking tall. Kung Fu is not for them. So when I tell you something about your body size... If, like I said, if you're 6'2 and 6'1, you're still in that cusp. But if you're 6'8 and up, Kung Fu is not for you. It literally is not for you. You can do shit with it. But some of these like long range kicks are going to be your downfall. Because you got, you got to pull that shit back to get back onto a base. All right? I don't have to do that. See, I'm here. Boom. I can step in. Or... I can step in that way. I can I can maneuver a lot more in my small ass frame than you can in your big frame. I'm not saying that it's impossible, but it's just gonna look more finesseful with me and look more sloppier with a long linkier motherfucker. So if you wanna say I'm a hater, there's your go. You can say I'm a hater. But I'ma own what I say. If you are over six two, if you're like six three and up, you have to go with more Japanese styles. You can't really fuck with Capoeira like talking about it. You can't really fuck with fucking Wushu like talking about it because those are fucking aerial shits. I ain't never seen too many people do Capoeira where they don't stay on the ground. Yeah, they're like way off into the sunset. Same thing with Wushu. All right? Kenpo, Karate, Kung Fu, Wing Chun, you don't really have to leave the ground. Taekwondo, sometimes you leave the ground. Certain forms of Kenpo, some cock and kicks and shit, you leave the ground. But most of the time, if you just stick him with Wen Chun, you stick him with Gung Fu, stick him with a little JKD, you know, you're not leaving the ground as much as you think. It's not like in the movies. Alright? Somebody going for a fucking foot sweep and they're long and you butterfly kick over that shit just to dodge it. You know, a butterfly kick from somebody who's 5'11 to 6'1, it's gonna be fine. A butterfly kick from somebody the size of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or Shaq is going to lead them to a fucking injury. Even if they nail their opponent, the landing and the weight and the mass of their body is going to affect them on some level or another. They may never be able to pull up another kick like that. You understand? So that six foot, six one, six two, you're on the cusp. But well, once you hit like six three, six four, six five, six six, six seven. You got some problems. Now, you can probably do certain Shaolin Kung Fu things, but you won't be doing certain kicks without consequences. That being said, it's Kung Fu Avenue number two. B, C, and U. It's a long-ass video. Sorry, y'all.